my goals for this year obviously are uh, first and foremost will be to to improve on on the world ranking my name is mark ricks reporting for golf in uae the only place you need to visit for golf views unique insights and anything to do with golf in the world quite frankly so log on to www.golfnews.com and check out Golf in UAE. It's my great pleasure today to be with Rafa Cabrera Bell. Rafa is an established global golfing star who turned professional in 2005. He's a multiple winner around the world and on the European tour particularly, and also a Dubai resident, but a native from Gran Canaria in Spain. Rafa is a former winner of the Dubai Desert Classic in 2012, and also a 2016 Ryder Cup star. That was at Hazel Tyne in 2016, yes, and uh, USA unfortunately won by 17 points to 11, but Rafa was one of the stars of the show, taking two and a half points from his matches. Good morning, Rafa. Good morning. And thank you for joining us here at uh, Jebel Ali Resorts and Hotels. Oh, my pleasure. Um, my first question is, um, why are you here in Dubai right now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I, I live here, obviously, yeah, okay. so I like it. It's a, it's a great spot. Uh, I can play golf, uh, if not all year round, because the summer's a little hot. But uh, with me being in European and, and spending the the hard months of the summer uh, back in Europe and in the US, where I compete mainly, uh, okay. this this gives me really like eight months uh, a year where I can uh, really really uh, practice and and. And, and prepare for, for my season uh, the best possible way. And the weather, pretty similar to your home country, right? Yes, in the, in the good months it is. I mean, I'm from the Canary Islands. The weather is beautiful there uh, all year round. Uh, and uh, I mean, when the months, when the weather's good here, it, is, it does resemble a lot. One of your last events, you were actually hosting the Open at uh, Gran Canaria, correct? Yes, the Gran Canaria Lopez and Open, yeah. How did that come about? The European tour has been uh, Speaking with players, trying to to get them involved in in hosting events. Uh, other other players have done it. Uh, Lee Westwood, Ian Poulter, okay. Tommy Fleetwood, uh, Danny Willett recently yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, myself, it, I mean, it it, it is a, a real honor. Uh, it is a pleasure. I mean, the to to be able to to help a little uh, your region and 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 to be in a way uh, ambassador for for a European tour event uh, that's uh, something really cool obviously the course we played uh, at uh, I didn't grow up playing on that course because uh, I wasn't uh, it wasn't built when I was a little yeah. kid I think it looked amazing on TV and uh, it uh, it was it was a different type of test of golf because it's a it's an easier course and yeah. the conditions were so nice that normally we would have expected a little bit more breeze but uh, I think overall everyone enjoyed it and uh, we, we got to portray uh, Gran Canaria and the Canary Islands uh, as, as, as good as they deserve. How has COVID affected your schedule in the last 18 months and, and, and your ability to travel to events and prepare for events? It had a bigger impact uh, at the beginning initially when uh, I think from March uh, last year, like kind of like the world shut down uh, for several months. Uh, and that's when we were kind of a little bit stuck in the US because uh, initially the they announced it was going to be a three week break so we didn't want to leave the country in case we had to come back for the masters and and potentially we could be stuck or there be no no travel at all and we decided to stay in the US then unfortunately at the time the 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 layover without events uh, got extended so we knew it was going to be for longer at that time we couldn't even come back here home uh, to Dubai because Dubai had shut its borders and it did affect uh, uh, a little at the beginning we just didn't know what was going to happen at all and we just had to stay put there and uh, be patient uh, and then once we resumed uh, things got a little a little a little better I mean we we got a, a I mean we got a, a travel permit to the US uh, which is where I needed it the most uh, primarily to be able to come back and forth uh, right. from here and from Europe to, to the US, which yeah. made all the difference. So Rafa, you had a good start to the season in Abu Dhabi. I think you finished fourth, right? Correct, yeah. What goals do you have for the rest of 2021 in terms of tournaments and rankings and so on? My goals for this year obviously are, uh, first and foremost, will be to, to improve on, on the world ranking. No, I have, uh, 
I have dropped uh, outside of the top 15 in the world, which is where I really want to be uh, over the last 18 months. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and I guess to do that, I mean, you obviously have to have to play good. I mean, I'd like to win. I haven't won in the US yet, so I really want to do that. And uh, I would also like to qualify uh, for the Ryder Cup. That uh, it was a really, really nice experience uh, for me in, in Hazeltine in 2016. And I, I really want to repeat it. Uh, so, yeah, those are my primary goals. So obviously being resident in Dubai, you spend a lot of time here. Um, can I ask you, uh, what, what's the favorite thing for you about Dubai? Your favorite restaurant, for example? Well, there's many things uh, I like about Dubai, but like, I mean, talking about uh, food, for example, uh, I think if if I have to pick a favorite restaurant, I have to say Le Petit Maison, because if not, my wife is going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm more of a meat eater, so I, I, I really like Seafire, for example, uh, in, in the Atlantis. Uh, I, I, I like that place. I like the high ceilings and the, it's, uh, it's, uh, I, love, I love meat. So here we are, sat on the Ledbetter Academy at uh, JA Resort and Hotels Jebel Ali Golf Club. Um, I play here once a month in a, in a, in a society event, uh, and I love the course, it's beautiful. But I, I was really interested to ask you, what's your best score on this track? I very seldomly play 18 holes when I play here. Most of the times I come here, it's just uh, to practice completely on my own. I'm not so much uh, counting score. Uh, and with the, to be fair, with the, since they remodeled, and with COVID, I haven't really, I mean, I've played the course and I have come out to practice, but I haven't played enough to say, okay, I'm going to try to set a good score. But I probably think something, I, I mean, five or six under on, on, uh, on the, on, uh, over nine holes on the, on, the, on the old course before the changes. And now I have to go out here and, and put a score. So Rafa, thank you so much for your time at uh, JA Hotels and uh, Resorts this morning at Jebel Ali Golf Club. Great to see you. Um, I know you're busy and I know you're traveling and we wish you all the success in the world for this year and for your next event particularly uh, and also for your pending new arrival in August. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. And uh, I'm going to jump out of the box here and ask you for an uh, unusual request. Uh, sure. Normally pros were always uh, signing balls, so maybe we can turn things around and I can ask you to, to sign this ball for me, please. Uh, okay then. <laughs> Who's it to? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. I, I want to wish uh, Golf News their, their very best with the launch of the website uh, for, for golf here in the, in the UAE.